Hey guys, it's Alex here from alextubi.com and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As an online business owner, course creator, and YouTuber, there's a lot of gear that I've accumulated over time that helps me get shit done and supports my business. So in today's video, I thought I could share what those are with you and hopefully hear what your gear must-haves are in the comments below. So today we'll be specifically talking about the physical gear I use, but if you're interested in my favorite digital software, then go ahead and watch this video or check out my favorite apps in this video. All right, so first up is my camera, which is the Canon 6D Mark II. Okay, that's what I am filming on right now. It's a great camera because it's high quality and it has a full frame sensor, but it isn't like a million dollars. So definitely a great investment and something I plan to keep using for a while. So with the camera, of course, I have a few different lenses, but the one that I'm always reaching for and the one that I'm using right now is the Canon 28 millimeter 1.8. So this is a super wide angle and has a small aperture so you can make the background super blurry and creamy and take really, really great photographs and obviously video with it as well. My other go-to lens is this Canon 50 millimeter 1.8. So very similar in the sense of aperture, um, but it's much more narrow. So um, great, great lens to have. I just prefer the 28 millimeter these days. Oh, and by the way, everything that I'm gonna talk about today is linked in the description box below if you wanna go and check out the details of it or pick one up for yourself. Okay, next is my computer, or computers, I should say. Um, obviously, I have this big computer. This is the Apple iMac 27-inch computer. I'm not actually sure what year it is. It's gonna be 2019 or 2020. Um, great computer. Love the size. Uh, typically you get an option between 21 inch and 27 inch. And I went for the bigger one because bigger is always better. Um, but actually it's amazing because I can have multiple windows open and kind of just manage multiple things on one screen without having to switch back and forth. So no complaints about this computer. However, I do have another Apple computer, which is my laptop. And I have a few complaints about this one. <laughs> so I use the late 2015 Apple MacBook Pro Retina 13 inch laptop. I'm sure many of you have this computer. Um, it's a great computer and the last good Apple MacBook Pro I think that Apple made. Um, I actually got water on this and fried the logic board. So I ended up buying a newer model of the MacBook Pro and I was extremely disappointed when it came in the mail and I found out that they had completely removed the USB ports. So. Um, they've taken all of them away and I had to buy an accessory that would allow me to have USB ports and an HDMI and SD card reader, all things that I think computers still need today. You know, I can, I can get on board with uh, removing the CD drive, but I can't get on board with removing USB drives. I don't think that we need to do that. Um, so I was pretty upset about that. And then as I continued to use it reluctantly, um, I had issues with the keyboard. So they made the keyboard really like flush. And if you drop like one crumb on it, then all of your keys would be jammed up and it was just a freaking headache. So I ended up selling that computer to someone and I paid 500 plus dollars for the logic board to be fixed on this one. And now I'm using this one again. Um, and yeah, I don't know how you guys feel about Apple, but I personally feel like they're just increasing the price of their products without really adding anything new or making them any better. So I'm personally, gonna probably move away from Apple. Um, if I have to buy a new computer, I'm definitely gonna check out some Windows options or I'm gonna stick with buying old refurbished models um, because those are the ones that are actually good. So that's my computer situation. I would love to know how you guys feel about Apple or if you're like a Windows Android person, um, just comment below and let me know. Next is my microphone, which is the Blue Yeti. This is a very popular microphone and for good reason because it's high quality and it's pretty inexpensive. I think it was around $100, $150 and you can go and get it at like your local Best Buy um, or obviously you can buy it on Amazon. Um, but yeah, just a simple microphone that either comes on its own stand or you can mount it onto a C stand or a, um, a microphone arm, whatever you want. Um, so yeah, highly recommend this microphone. All right, next up is external drives. So once you start getting into video editing or video making or even taking a lot of photos, um, you're gonna need some extra space, especially on these computers that might not have as much storage um, as you'd like. So I've got the Western Digital two terabyte 
um, external drive. And then I also have this Seagate one. I think it's one terabyte. Um, honestly, any brand will do, I think. I'm not like a snob when it comes to uh, external drives, um, but you definitely need them. Again, if you're doing lots of video, your video files are huge. If you're shooting photos in raw format, then your photos are huge. So I've just made it a habit to instantly transfer any new photos or video onto these external drives and keep them off my computers so that they're always running as fast and as efficiently as possible. So, um, these hard drives are not that expensive anymore. Back in the day, I feel like getting a one terabyte hard drive was like $300 and now you can probably get one for less than a hundred. Um, so highly recommend if you need to save some space on your computer and also keep your files in a safe place. So if anything happened to your laptop, like say you poured water on it, uh, all your files will be on your external drive, which you can transfer to any computer. So just a good idea in terms of uh, longevity of your files. All right, next up is this Pixel, Pixel Pro camera remote. Um, but it's not just your typical camera remote, it's actually an intervalometer. So how this works is that there's a piece that connects to my camera, which is sitting on my camera right now, and then there's this piece, and the two of them wirelessly connect together. And from there, you can use the trigger button to take a single photo or start a video, or you can set it up to take photos at any interval you want, okay? So for example, you may wanna take a photo every five seconds for a total of 30 photos, if you're trying to capture like a photo for Instagram, or you can take a photo every 30 minutes for a total of 100 photos to create a time lapse. okay? So you can basically set this up to do any interval that you can imagine, it's entirely up to you. Um, and it just makes it uh, super handy to create things, like I said, a time lapse or to just get photos of yourself if you're your own photographer and you don't wanna have the remote in your picture or have to hide it or anything like that. So super handy tool, highly recommend it. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about my video recording gear. So I already mentioned my camera and the lens, but with that, you need a tripod. So the tripod that I use is the K&M Concept 62 inch aluminum tripod. Um, it's a really great tripod because it's super sturdy, it extends really high, and it's got this cool feature where you can actually flip it upside down um, and attach your camera to the bottom of the tripod so that it sits just above the ground, which will give you a really, really unique perspective. And it just helps you kind of get more creative with your photography. So um, I really like this tripod. Then I've got this newer seven inch video field monitor. So this is currently dead, otherwise I'd show you, but um, it, shows me exactly what my camera is recording so that when I'm recording a video, I can see exactly how I look and you know how the background looks and you know if there's any issues happening. I like it, I do all my filming alone for the most part, so I just wanna make sure that what I'm capturing is you know what I actually want it to look like. Otherwise, I'd have to like get it from this chair, go around the camera, look in the back, and just like, it doesn't work that well. So I purchased this. Um, the only issue is it's battery operated, so I have to remember to charge it all the time, otherwise, it will die, um, which is what happened now. And you, it comes with a ball joint so that you can attach it to the top of your camera so that when you're looking at it, you're actually seeing a, an accurate image because you're not looking down to look at it or looking to the side to look at it. Um, however, I like to put it on this gorilla pod and wrap it around something in front of me uh, to make room for my teleprompter. So my teleprompter is the 10 inch Teleprompter Pad Pro. Teleprompter Pad Pro, oh my God. Um, and I don't always use it, but it is definitely handy in terms of getting your videos done quickly, okay? By using a teleprompter, I can record a video in one take versus when I try to ad lib it, it takes me a bit longer, um, or I might say something that I didn't actually mean or I didn't communicate my point properly and then I'll have to take multiple takes. Um, so when using the teleprompter, I just get my videos done a lot faster and it makes sure that I don't um, miss any of the important points that I wanna get across. So this comes in a cute little carrying case and it's basically just a piece of glass that goes in front of your camera. You can then put your script into a teleprompter app on your phone, put that phone in front of the mirror and then when the text scrolls by, you can read it while looking directly into the camera lens. So, um, Definitely recommend for anyone who's newer to making videos or who makes technical videos where you wanna make sure that you don't miss any important points. 
All right, then finally, the last thing I use to help me create my online courses and my YouTube videos is lighting. So I've got a couple Canadian Studio soft boxes. Um, they're the four bulb soft boxes, and they're not bad. Um, they were like the first light that I bought, and they definitely get the job done. However, I do think you can get a more powerful, more high-end light if, if you prefer. Um, but these are great starters, pretty inexpensive, and do a good job of you know filling the room with light. I also um, sometimes use a ring light, which I have here, um, but I do find that the ring light is a bit harsh, so I like to combine the two to make sure I'm getting the brightness and the softness from both of them. So again, I'm not a lighting expert. Um, it's one of the things that I think I struggle with the most in terms of like consistency. Every time I sit down to do a video, um, the lighting is always like hit or miss. I'm just like, eh, I move it around until it looks pretty good, and then I just kind of go with it. So um, I do plan to invest in more um, higher end lighting soon, so stay tuned for that and I'll let you guys know what I end up getting. So that's it guys. All the links to the products I've mentioned are in the description box below. So feel free to check them out and please let me know in the comments what gear you use that you can't live without. And as always, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you never miss another video from me. Have a great day guys and I will see you next time.